Ogre Cavalry was one of the unit types most affected by the collision damage bug, so I've been trying them out a little bit in 1.1 and having some success with them. Uh, Crushers with Grapids today up against Corn. Uh, I'm up against one of my new patrons. We'll go with Fred or Frederick. Uh, I've got a, a Slaughtermaster, Lord of Great Maw, Hunter on a Stonehorn, some Ogre Bulls, two Maneater Pistols, three Bulls, and five Noblars with just the single Crusher. Crushers are very expensive. Most expensive single non OR ROR cavalry in the game. 80 charge bonus. Uh, they do have huge mass as well 3,700 mass, 130 weapon strength, 30 bonus versus large, being the great weapon variant, 120 armor as well. A couple of saber tusks pack. Saber, saber tusk packs in the back for my opponent's corn here he's got scar brand some chaos warriors of corn with halberds one dual hand weapon a little bit of an experimental pick along with a couple of cultists and we've got some flesh hounds here in the woods one exalted blood letter in the back again a little bit of an experimental pick um four halberds is definitely pretty solid you could trade one of these out for just another halberd though I think the dual hand weapon warriors, although it is nice to cut through Noblars quickly, uh, they're not going to do a ton for you. But anyway, Ogre Cavalry, uh, the impact bug, basically uh, the collision damage bug, rather, uh, what it did is it made their mass equivalent, right? So this 3700 mass, when they charge into, let's say, for example, these uh, corn halberds getting currently stomped on by the Stonehorn, these guys only have 160 mass, right? So basically, the Crushers would have 160 mass when they charged these Corn Warriors, right? So that has now been fixed, so that they will actually deal the full damage on impact. It's why before, like on the actual, like uh, when actual charge animation connected, oftentimes you didn't see any damage previously. But anyway, some serious, serious damage coming in from the Maneater Pistols. Also come forward with the Bulls and the Noblars, able to just stomp through one unit of halberds very quickly but now scarbrand coming in and my pistols are mostly being occupied uh my opponent's doing a great job trying to rush through and get the back line but the crushers now prove one good use case in this matchup which is an elite back line clearer obviously flesh hounds so you might think this is a little bit of overkill but the flesh hounds are very dangerous for pretty much every faction to deal with just very cost effective and can deal quite a bit of damage in general. So that anti-large bonus is a huge single, uh, I guess not single target, but splash. I'd have to actually look at their splash attack profile, see how many splash attack targets they have, but just in general, they take very little losses and help the Saber Tusk packs help uh, to defeat those flesh hounds. That being said, we need help to also take out Scarbrand, so the elite anti-large AP comes down to help finish him off, we've got uh, Troll Guts, and I think I've been using Bull Gorger also on that Hunter to help him trade into Scarbrand. Scarbrand all juiced up with Wrathful Reaper and Horn of Corn up to a thousand plus weapon strength. Uh, the Corn Infantry, though, definitely taking a beating. Exalted Bloodletters do come through. They're going to get on the uh, Bulls there, and then the surround around the Salt Slaughtermaster, they're going to do some pretty decent damage. They'll also light him on fire, though so that he won't be healing as much. But uh, already, you can see in the back line with the uh, Flesh Hounds crumbling, the Cultists did get their summons off, so more Blood Letters on the field, but Scarbrand just getting absolutely pounded. The Crushers had done a pretty substantial amount of damage to him. But uh, yeah, at this point, he is struggling pretty badly. The Hunter just has so much, uh, the Stonehorn, I should say, has so much HP. The Hunter's just kind of along for the ride. Another unit that probably needs some nerfs in the next patch. I would expect Ogres to get some nerfs. They're still probably the best faction or the second best faction, hard to say. Them and Zinch, I would both expect to get a few more nerfs and maybe some slight buffs too, maybe, but probably primarily just nerfs, nothing too extreme. Like the Stonehorn could use some nerfs. I think probably the regular Bulls and Maneater Pistols all could use some nerfs as well. Uh, but anyway, speaking of the pistols, Drawing a bead up on the high ground. Scarbrand getting torn down. And the Crushers were able to pay for themselves pretty much. No, not even close. <laughs> he did quite a bit of damage, but they took almost no damage in return. So, hard to say if they were worth it or not. Um, uh, in, in previous battles, unfortunately, I didn't save. I had one in particular against Nurgle versus Flying Taco that I 
unfortunately forgot to save where they were able to perform quite well and pay for themselves here i mean in terms of the damage output for my army a lot of it comes from the hunter on the stone horn just with the support though it does help and that's what i would say in my experience and we'll look at one replay this one was a little bit quick so stay tuned i have another one to show you guys uh sort of a counterpoint uh but crushers in general i think are great as a support they're super expensive so you don't want to take too many of them but one as like an elite support for that stone horn them together fighting scarbrand even though the stone horn ends up doing a lot of the damage in himself um these guys you know just as a as a elite cavalry support unit they definitely can get some serious work done as the primary damage dealer though i'm not convinced uh, we'll take a look at another replay in just a second where we showcase that but in terms of the rest of the army here bulls pretty cost effective uh yeah the man eater pistols also don't pay for themselves but get a, a pretty good amount of damage out scarbrand 124 kills definitely murdered some um noblars but just in general uh had a pretty tough time there against the stonehorn with all of the support so let's go ahead and take a look at the next replay and see if you are primarily relying on crushers as your damage output unit how is that going to work out for you so let's take a look at that next okay so that wasn't entirely true some of my damage output is also in greases and this here giant which i have traded out for the man eater pistols but that's more so i i have explicitly not brought the range units so that i'm sort of forcing myself to use the crushers or at least try to use them to best effect likewise uh, my patron here frederick refined his build somewhat based on some of my sort of coaching and some discussions that we had together uh spawn of corn are now in his main line with all halberds got four halberds furies of corn and some flesh hounds over on the far side herald of corn also quite cheap and very cost effective on the juggernaut there and of course the cultist myself yeah we've got one dual hand weapon bull the butcher of the great maw and then the crushers as well so this time i mean obviously lacking the range damage output is already gonna get put me a little bit behind against the halberds and that's one issue of crushers and just the ogre cavalry in general is people are going to take anti-large against you right so they're likely to face counters already now corn is a good interesting case because they have very strong halberds good anti-large ap specifically where the heavy armor of the crushers against somebody like nurgle might actually matter pretty substantially versus like a lighter armor bull or man eater or something like that but here with bull gorger they're absolutely crushing get it the uh the spawn there but the herald does come in in other pockets they're maybe not doing quite so well i tried to get a, a charge with the giant and the noblars even into these halberds and we managed to do some damage but also taking significant damage in return saber tusk pass saber tusk axe getting through <laughs> also getting on those spawns there but uh, yeah one crusher doing very well the other one i mean this is a lot of resource commit just to take out one halberd and the trade there was super inefficient for me uh the halberds are you know half price of the crushers exactly and uh, they've done more than half hp damage to the crushers right so not an efficient engagement at all for me uh, i should probably should be using them to try to backline protect like i did in the last game my opponent hasn't really deployed his flesh hounds too aggressively but uh the lack of range damage output on these halberds i definitely feel so this is one thing about ogres because people are going to spam anti-large against you uh, i feel that in a lot of cases especially against melee factions you're going to want your own range to try and punch back uh, so that you don't necessarily have to fight in melee always against the halberds man eater pistols also just a great hybrid unit can fight reasonably well in melee in a pinch um their armor piercing damage and everything so yeah the bulls getting surrounded and just munched on by noblars over here great job there these crushers did finish off those spawn now full surround on the herald they're probably going to take him out but it's taking them a long time to do so maybe a little bit longer than i would have hoped the rest of my army is just getting absolutely destroyed in the meantime these crushers run out of steam pretty quickly against the halberds and spawn the spawn also relatively cheap mass blocking and have great damage output of course even against heavy armor targets but especially against light armor targets in a surround against this giant the halberds and the spawn actually doing some substantial damage that giant has a lot of hp he's getting torn down alarmingly quickly so 
I mean, it's kind of how it goes sometimes, Ogres versus Corn. I feel like I've done, yeah, in fact, real, not that long ago, maybe like a month ago, I did a Ogres versus Corn land battle double cast. So, a little bit of deja vu there. But uh, anyway, just thought I'd show you guys my, a little bit of my research on Crushers. I'm going to keep using them. Hopefully, I can get a good replay of them versus Nurgle. I had one, like I said, unfortunately, did not remember to save it. But I think that's probably the best matchup for them because, I mean, the armor matters quite a bit. The heavy mass, the, also the anti-large damage would be pretty good against somebody like uh, Kugath and, you know, taking maybe one of them or two of them in, in a matchup like, oh, could be pretty good. Maybe one also in this matchup is pretty decent, just uh, like I said, as a heavy elite support unit to help, uh, you know, fight whatever's big and scary here. Definitely the stone horn on the hunt. Uh, the, yeah, the <laughs> Hunter on the Stonehorn and the, the Man Eater Pistols is going to be a more ideal setup. This one's a little bit too meme -y, I think. But uh, the, one of the Crushers does end up paying out a huge amount of value. I mean, it, by themselves, pretty much, they killed a unit of Spawn and the Herald of Corn, which is great. It definitely can be cost-effective. The other one, though, shows how they can also struggle pretty badly, just running into Halberds and dying very cost-efficiently. Uh, the giant also and Greasis just getting murdered by spawn and halberds. This is a pretty strong build, I would say, to be honest, for land battles. Um, you might have some issues with um, iron blasters, even still, like one or two could cause you some problems potentially with this build. But I think with the mobility, if you're pressuring well enough, you could get in there. And I mean, it's not like you have anything necessarily over a thousand points, still, nothing really below 700 points. So it's kind of interesting. Um, in terms of build perspective. But anyway, keeping the focus on the Crushers, like I said, I'm not totally convinced. I do like them as a unit, uh, as a support unit. I don't know primary damage dealer if they're really worth it. 1,900 is a lot to pay for them. And if you have too many different units to heal, then it's going to be tough to, you know, get the Winds of Magic to be able to heal them if you're trying to dedicate to healing like Rhesus or whatever. So that's why in the other build, I mean... The man eater pistols, hopefully you don't have to heal them. You can, I guess, if you have to, but uh, ideally you're going to be keeping them more in the back line, safe from threats, engaging if they have to, but uh, generally staying out of melee combat till the late game. Whereas the crushers, um, you know, if you have just them plus like the slaughter master, and then the hunter, right? Like I had in that previous build, stone hunter, the stone hunter, and then the crushers are two targets that you would need to heal. Pretty much everything else you can just forsake, so that would give you plenty of uh, space for Troll Guts. I mean, obviously, you might have to self-heal a little bit on the Slaughtermaster. He gets out of position, um, but generally, I would say he can also heal in melee himself a little bit with his Blood Cleaver, fighting low-tier units. Definitely no issue at all. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think this base to work from seems pretty solid for me for corn. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.